men ought so to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but rather he nourisheth it and cherisheth it as the lord also doth the church for we be members of his body of his flesh and of his bones seeing that the holy scripture exhorteth us to be kind-hearted meek and patient one to another and setteth us down the example of god who is reconciled to us in the person of his son our lord jesus christ and showeth us therewithal that jesus christ spared not himself but showed the love that he bare us and the care that he had of our salvation in that he gave himself to so hard and bitter a death it must needs be that our hearts are harder than steel if they be not meekened by it and yet notwithstanding all these exhortations cannot suffice us by reason of our wilfulness and corruption god therefore to put us to the greater shame sendeth us back to the order of nature as if it were said that although we had never heard any word of god's mouth nor never had had any teaching by holy scripture yet ought every of us to enter into himself and to consider his own state for that will be enough to hold us convicted without any other witness and that could the heathen men tell us full well who having neither belief in god nor any religion could notwithstanding well skill to say that the wild beasts make not war one against another for one wolf eateth not another the bears and lions that live abroad in the wild woods have a certain thing that holdeth them in order so as they hurt not one another and yet have they no discretion as is among men but they have as it were a natural moving which driveth them to love one another so as every of them liveth quietly with his fellow now then must it not needs be that men are altogether out of square and do despise god and nature seeing they live like dogs and cats as they say and every man is as a wolf or a fox to his neighbour so as there is nothing but craftiness and malice or else utter cruelty that is the cause why god telleth us that we be all of one flesh and of one kind and isaiah useth the same reason to persuade us to succour our neighbours and to have pity and compassion of them they stand in any need thou shalt not despise thine own flesh saith he for the further stranger in the world is never the more separated from us for all that but both he and we spring both out of one fountain and we ought to acknowledge him to be our image therefore whosoever disdaineth any man surely he forgetteth himself too much and he knoweth not what he is neither is worthy of the honourable degree wherein god hath set him and why because he perverteth all order now if this reason ought to take place in general much more ought men to be touched to the quick when it is told them what they be specially seeing they be linked together in a much straighter bond as if a man should say to a father how now if thou be so far out of love with thy son that thou art unwilling to see him and disdainest to talk with him and he can find no means to come to atonement with thee what a cruelty is that for he is thy flesh and thy blood and how then canst thou be so blinded in thine excessive mood as not to consider that god hath given him thee as though he had come out of thine own person and to a son it will be said likewise how now is it meet that thou shouldst be born into the world and have room and place among god's children and in the meanwhile forget thy father that begat thee and by whose means god sent thee into the world now the holiest band that god hath set among us is the bond between man and wife that is the cause why st paul saith that a man cannot love his wife but he must love himself and contrariwise that if he despise his wife or hate her it is all one as if he fall at odds with himself and is that possible heretofore he had exhorted husbands to do their duty by having an eye to the example of our lord jesus christ and he had alleged that the son of god had given himself to the death to wash his church so that although it was poor and miserable and full of filth and uncleanness yet notwithstanding the son of god had pity of her and after he had suffered that which was needful for our salvation he left us moreover a record of the grace which he hath purchased for us 
insomuch that in baptism we have a visible token that the blood of our lord jesus christ is our washing and cleansing can we think upon all these things and not be moved to some gentleness yea if we consider first of all that we be but wretched worms of the earth and to be short that there is nothing in us but utter misery so as we may well be called vermin and carrions full of all corruption and loathsomeness and afterward compare ourselves with the son of god ought there to be any such pride in us as to esteem and commend ourselves or to tread others under our feet now if this be general to all men as i said what shall it be between man and wife for the knot that god hath knit betwixt them is such that the husband is as you would say but half himself and may no more separate himself from his wife than the wife may separate herself from her husband but each of them must have regard to their own state as shall be declared in the end and hath been partly declared already the husband is indeed the head but the woman is the body and whereas the head hath preeminence and sovereignty over the body it doth not therefore follow that he should hold scorn of it or be glad to have it shamed or reproached for doth not the honour of the head extend to the whole body but now forasmuch as husbands are not sufficiently moved with the reason that is taken of our lord jesus christ st paul bringeth them back to their original and forasmuch as the heathen folk and unbelievers were acquainted with marriage and had given indignant of it therefore we need no holy scripture saith he to teach us in this behalf for the ignorant souls which had but natural understanding and walked as their mother wit directed them knew that the wife is a piece of the husband and that there goeth an inseparable bond betwixt them and that the one ought not to forsake the other unless they will tear themselves in pieces seeing that the blind wretches perceive this what a shame is it for such as are enlightened by god's word and have been taught familiarly as household folk even as a father hath his eye upon his children to be ignorant of it seeing say i that god speaketh so familiarly to us and as it were mouth to mouth so as he showeth us his will and telleth us our duty must it not needs be that we are worse than the infidels and much more grievously to be condemned than they if we continue hard-hearted or stop our ears lest we might receive the advice that he giveth us then let us mark well that seeing st paul hath set us forth our lord jesus christ for an example and told us that he is so given us it is good reason considering how we be linked unto him that we should show ourselves willing to follow him and fashion ourselves like unto him by pitying such as are in distress by bearing patiently with the vices and infirmities of our neighbours and by relieving such as have need of us if we may conveniently and have wherewithal let us think well upon that again forasmuch as here is mention made of man and wife let them that are married consider what damnation is prepared for them if they be not moved and touched to the quick by the things that are told them here namely that on the one side the heathen folk shall rise up to give witness against them at the latter day and that on the other side the order of nature teacheth them what they have to do so that if they live not in concord and friendship as is showed them here they do as it were wilfully withstand god yea and utterly forget themselves and become worse than brute beasts and furthermore let them know also that forasmuch as marriage is a figure of the holy union that is between the son of god and all the faithful the same ought also to hold them in the greater reverence and although there happen many contentions yet ought they to subdue them and to let them lie as dead and to consider that since our lord jesus sitteth over them it is to show that wedlock was blessed in such wise by god his father at the first that he himself also hath ratified the same blessing by his death and passion yea and reconciled us to god in such wise as the husband may perceive as it were in a lively picture that he is all one with his wife howbeit in such wise under the obedience of god as both twain of them ought to serve him with one accord even until they be so far forth as they be come to him to cleave to him thoroughly in all perfection now although such warnings ought to be of great force among us yet are very few touched with them accordingly and the world sees it for let a man look into all households one after another and where shall he find such friendship as may resemble jesus christ and his church 
nowhere. But the man and his wife are rather ever jarring and disagreeing. And if there happen to be some fond love, yet is there no fear of God, and the least occasion in the world will be enough to set them at odds, so as they forget all that is contained here. Or, to say the truth, they never once think of it. The love that is betwixt them is led and provoked by their lusts, and not grounded upon any knowledge that they have of the discharging of their duty, that the husband considereth how he ought to bear with his wife, how he ought to guide her in the fear of God, and how he ought to love her as a helper allotted unto him for his ease, that he might walk as he ought to do, nor that the wife humbleth herself to her husband, or bendeth her wits to please him, because she perceiveth that she is expressly given unto him to be a furtherance and not a hindrance unto him. There is no talk nor inkling of all this, but, if all be well considered, I say, the common and most ordinary state is that in every house a man shall find devilishness, cursing, banning, blasphemy, swearing, spitefulness, and harming. And although some woman be a fiend towards her neighbours, as well as she is towards her husband, yet if her husband had any wealth or goods by her, he must take her part without discretion and maintain her quarrel, be it good or bad. I say, a man may see, that this perverseness reigneth well near everywhere. Again every man complains of his wife, saying, I cannot live with her, it is a mad beast, there is nothing in her but pride and peevishness, and there is nothing in her but froward stubbornness. I cannot speak a word to her, but she pays me again with four for it. Now surely such as men make their wives, such have they of them. For were there no more but this that I spake of, namely that men do, as it were, in spite of God, maintain their wives' wrongful quarrels? Ought not God to yield them their deserved hire, and to make it rebound back upon their own pats? Whatsoever I say, if a man mark well every man's ordinary trade of life, he shall find that there may be a sort of fond love and a fort of excessive affections, but as for well-ordered friendship, such as dependeth upon God, and is grounded on his word, hardly shall he among a hundred houses find one, where the husband and the wife are so well qualified. Yet notwithstanding we be unexcusable, if we profit not in this doctrine. So then every of us must fight against his unruly affections, and if a man have not such a wife as he could wish, let him understand that God intendeth to try his patience by that means, and let him consider well that he behaveth himself worse towards our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the husband to whom all of us are married. And therefore let him not be rigorous towards his wife, seeing that he himself deserveth to be so humbled. To be short, let every man so mind this doctrine, that when the husband hath not all things in his wife that he desireth, he may think thus with himself, Yet am I bound unto her, yea, and I am not only bound unto my wife, but also unto God, who is the master of marriage, and to our Lord Jesus Christ, who is as a mirror and lively image of it unto us. Therefore am I bound to do my duty towards her, and both to love her and to bear with her, although there be vices in her. Yet is it not meant that the husband should foster and feed his wife's vices? For, as we must warn and counsel one another, so must there not be any such nearness or linking together, but that if the husband see anything amiss in his wife, he must at least wise tell her of it, yea, and rebuke her, and labour and endeavour to bring her into the right way, as much as he can possibly. But, yet, howsoever the world go, so long as we be married, this stands continually, that we cannot change the order which our Lord hath set, yea, even to be inviolable. Therefore we must not pass what the persons are, insomuch that although a woman have too rough and sharp a husband, and such a one as dealeth over hardly with her, yet must she always consider that he is her husband, and that when God matched them together, he allotted her that portion because she was worthy of it, and let her also enter into examination of her sins, that she may pray God to take away that rod and to deal more gently with her. Then, like as the wife must on her side continue the bond of marriage, and submit herself even without respecting what her husband is, so when the husband hath not a wife to his liking, 
let him think likewise my wife doth not her duty i cannot live with her but yet doth wedlock dure still who ordained it god then if i forget my duty and revenge me of my wife or fall to stoutness without regarding what belongs to my charge it is not against a mortal creature that i shall bend myself when the husband overshoots himself after that sort surely he fighteth against god and endeavoureth to disannul the thing that is inviolable by nature so then let every of us put this doctrine better in you on his own behalf and let not only married folks but also all men in general understand that we cannot estrange ourselves one from another and become unkind merciless and impatient one toward another but we must be as witless creatures that have no reason nor regard from whence they come or to what end we live in this world that is the effect of the things which we have to bear in mind and if we regarded well the prophet's reason surely we should be more moved with this exhortation that is set here no man ever hated his own flesh but nourisheth and cherisheth it if every of us gave himself to consider what care he hath of his own person how tenderly he cherisheth all the parts of his body even to the least toe of his foot how carefully he forecasteth that nothing may want him and how provident he is in all respects for it so as if any member be ill at ease he endeavoureth to remedy it that he may maintain himself in health i say if every of us bethought himself thoroughly after that fashion surely then it would be a good teaching to us to do the like to our neighbours that is to say to all men and much more consequently the fathers to their children and the children to their fathers the husbands to their wives and the wives to their husbands and so forth mutually according as it hath pleased our lord to link us in nearer bond as i have said afore and if any body reply hereunto hush he or she is not myself i answer then it must needs follow that thou art no man for as i said afore god's creating and maintaining of us are with condition that we should be all as one mass for though there be many fingers and many sinews in a man's body yet is that no let but that they be all one thing neither is it any impeachment why one member should not succour another as well as itself for it is unkindly that the body should fall to banding and to dividing of itself into factions neither is it possible that it should so then if every of us be so wedded to his own profit that in the meanwhile he disdain others through pride or else be cruel so as he see all the miseries in the world he hath no compassion to relieve them nor can find in his heart to bear with anything or to forgive it is it not a sign that we have forgotten our own nature wherefore to the intent we may fare the better by this doctrine let us weigh well the words of st paul that never any man hated his own flesh but that every man nourisheth and cherisheth it need we a schoolmaster to teach us this needeth god to send us his angels from heaven or need we to take much pain to learn this art or cunning no we be but too much given to it already by nature since it is so every of us bears his own evidence rolled in record against himself and his own indictment ready framed there shall need no long examination before god for the more careful that men have been for their own bodies the more forecasting they have been for the maintenance of it and to be short the more signs that they show of loving themselves the grievouslier shall they be condemned before god because they have not done the like towards them which are their own flesh yea though they were most unknown and of the furthest country in the world as i said afore and if this be general for all what shall become of it when the son setteth himself with all outrage and stubbornness against his father so as he hath no meekness to suffer himself to be governed by him but even utterly shaketh him off for whom he ought to spend himself even to the death and also when the fathers on their side use nothing but bitterness towards their children or govern them in such wise as they do but provoke them to impatience when the husbands deal so roughly with their wives as it may utterly discourage them and cast them into sorrow so as they shall let themselves loose and fall disorderly to all manner of lewdness when the women likewise be stiff-necked and cannot be brought to good order i say when these disorders are among us let us assure ourselves there needeth none other record to condemn us 
than the care that every of us hath had of himself in that we have been mindful of our own welfare and laboured earnestly for it and in the meanwhile broken the bond that our lord had set among us and every of us drawn alone by himself and forgotten all duty of loving-kindness insomuch that we would if we had could have made every of us a new world truly there is no man of that ability that he can forbear the help of his neighbours and yet are we loath that our neighbours should dwell with us yea or that they should be counted in the number of men there is not that man which would not reign alone like a lord but this unkindness and lewdness are sufficient to show that we be not worthy to enjoy the benefits which god dealeth to us in this transitory life for since we be too much wedded unto it and mind it more carefully than we should do we be so guilty as there is not that man which may open his mouth to reply or to allege any excuse for himself and st paul having told us what we ought to know yea and to judge of our own nature returneth again to that which he had touched afore that is to wit that such as profess themselves to be members of the body of our lord jesus christ ought to be persuaded by his example to live quietly friendly and agreeingly with their wives no man saith he loveth himself but he loveth his wife also verily god hath ordained wedlock in such wise as the wife must be as the body of her husband therefore if a man love himself his wife must be matched with him or else it shall be a monstrous love it is a thing that men ought most to abhor that the thing which is most holy in man's life should be utterly abased seeing it is so he that loveth himself will love his wife for we be of his flesh we be of his bones here he toucheth a thing that he spake not of before for when he did set down the example of our lord jesus christ it was in alleging that he spared not himself but did shed his blood to wash us from our filthiness and uncleanness we were then defiled and stained before god and our lord jesus christ found the means to bring us in his favour again and how even by his own bloodshed but here he alleggeth another reason to confirm the matter yet better which is that we be bone of his bones and flesh of his flesh in so saying he doth us to understand that when men do their duty it is to their own benefit for thereby they may taste the inestimable and infinite grace of god that in every man according to his degree doth in his marriage represent the union that is between themselves and our lord jesus christ the thing therefore which st paul intendeth is yet again to remove the hardness of our hearts by showing us that we cannot enjoy the grace that is purchased us by our lord jesus christ unless we live in friendship together according to the image thereof which we have in the love that he bear us in his death and passion which surmounteth all the love that we can have one to another howbeit before we go any further let us see why and in what sense st paul saith that we be the bones of our lord jesus christ and of his flesh and members of his body for he is descended of adam's lineage and is called the seed of david and although he was conceived after a wonderful manner in the womb of the virgin yet took he man's flesh upon him and became very man howbeit he saith that he is the son of man to show that he hath taken a nature that is common to us wherein he hath made himself familiar with us and indeed as saith the apostle in the epistle to the hebrews he is not ashamed to call us brothers but now let us come to that which is said here it seemeth that st paul would make jesus christ as it were the root of mankind so as we should descend of him for he calleth us his offspring but we have to mark that forasmuch as our lord jesus christ was shaped of the seed of abraham to perform the things that were promised yea and that he could not be the mediator between god and us except he had been of our nature for he could not have amended our misdoings wherethrough we were bound to endless damnation unless he had clothed himself with our body and had also a soul to the end to present himself in the person of all men and so it behoved our lord jesus christ to be our flesh in our body we may say that he is of our bones and of our flesh and why he is descended of adam's race as i said afore but howsoever the case stand he was conceived marvellously by the holy ghost howbeit there is another respect for yet 
for all this he ceaseth not to be the second adam as st paul termeth him in making comparison between the grace wherewith we were set again and the deadly fall wherewith we were all forlorn he saith that the first adam did by his transgression make us enemies to god so as we have no access to him but should be thrust back if we priest to him and that justly for where sin reigneth there must needs be as it were unreconcilable division god being the fountain of all righteousness cannot match with our iniquities and corruptions then is there also a second adam which cometh to remedy all that is to wit our lord jesus christ and how is he the second adam for as i told you afore it is not meant that we should be so bold as to think to priest unto jesus christ as though we were linked to him of our own nature but that is done by the power of his holy spirit and not in the substance of his body behold then jesus christ is become very man and hath taken upon him the self-same human nature that is ours but yet is not of nature that we be his flesh and his bones for we be not descended of him as touching our own substance but it is of his divine power then must we come to this point that we be bone of the bones of our lord jesus christ because we be restored in him and have in him as it were a new and second creation and st paul as we shall see hereafter hath an eye to the original of eve for she was taken out of adam's substance and shaped of one of his ribs now then are we restored by our lord jesus christ if we consider our first birth whereby we be brought into this world to be mortal men we cannot say such is our flesh unless we be of the seed of them that were afore us but whatsoever we be in that seed we be accursed it is true that adam was created after the image of god but yet was that image defaced by sin so as we be not worthy to be counted among god's works and the same horrible condemnation is pronounced with his own mouth where he saith that it repenteth him that he had made man as though he disclaimed us all because we do but infect the earth and are not so worthy to be mustered in the array of his creatures as are the worms lice fleas dog-flies and all other vermin of the world that then is the benefit which we have by adam and as oft as it is said that we be of his seed and of his flesh it serveth to show us that there is nothing in us but a gulf of cursedness now hereupon if we come to our lord jesus christ we be restored again and as the scripture speaketh of it we be made new creatures in him ye see then that it is by power of the spirit and not by order of nature nor by any common fashion that we be of the bone and of the flesh of our lord jesus christ and the cause why we be members of his body is that god his father hath ordained and established him as our head howbeit as i said afore that is done by a secret power which we comprehend not but by faith then do both these things agree very well namely that jesus christ is of our bone and of our flesh in respect that he hath taken our human nature upon him and clothed himself with it without the which we should have no alliance with him for if we cannot attain to the angels how shall we attain to him that is the sovereign head of them but whereas he is come in such wise unto us that he hath vouchsafed to be knit in the bond of brotherhood with us that is done specially when he worketh so by the power of his holy spirit that he is our head and we are gathered together in him and have a heavenly state whereas afore we had nothing but of the earth and consequently had nothing in us but corruption now we be lifted up on high and are made the children of god by the grace that is spoken of here whereas erst we were heirs of his wrath which we hold from our father adam when we follow his nature because we are all lost and perverted in him thus you see in effect the two things are to be agreed wherein there seemed to be some diversity and indeed if we have not that what would become of us how miserable would our state be i have showed already that if any man look well what is in himself he shall find nothing there but matter to separate him from god now then until we be of the substance of our lord jesus christ god must needs hate us and abhor us and not know us to be of the number and company of his creatures 
now remaineth to see how it cometh to pass that we be of the bones of jesus christ and of his flesh for he is in heaven and we are here beneath on earth again when we be begotten every of us is begotten after the order of nature he hath his father and his mother to come of and they be of the same race that he is how then are we of the bones of jesus christ it is not in respect of substance for if we look upon our own flesh neither the skin nor the bones nor the gristles that we have do come of the body of our lord jesus christ but it is in respect that the curseness which we bring from our mother's womb and is spread over all adam's lineage is taken away by the power of our lord jesus christ and that therewithal he hath so shedded forth the grace of his holy spirit upon us that we be enlightened by it therefore it is as a quality as men term it and not a substance every man shall descend of such lineage and god letteth the common order run on still which he appointed at the beginning namely that men beget one another from issue to issue but in the meanwhile jesus christ reneweth those whom god his father hath chosen and such as are the members of his own body and riddeth them of the corruption which they had taken from adam and afterward he giveth them such a power as every of them feeleth by faith that he is under the head that is set over us and that we be gathered all together in him and his life is given unto us to the intent we should no more live to ourselves nor to the world but rather that he should live in us as st paul saith of him ye see then that jesus christ needeth not to come down from heaven to make us members of his body nor to diminish his own flesh to make us to grow out of him and to be shaped of him for all is done by the wonderful power of the holy spirit we draw not anything from the flesh nor from the body wherewith he once clothed himself for that is in heaven to the intent that we should be fashioned like unto the glory that is now in him but yet for all that he worketh in such wise as we have all our strength continually of him and like as trees draw both their flowers their leaves and their fruits from their root and like as the body of man feeleth his strength to flow down from the head so do we feel the virtue and force of the conjunction that is between us and our lord jesus christ and yet he continueth still in his full state all the while neither doth that hinder us to enjoy the inestimable benefit that st paul magnifieth so much in this text and therewithal let us bear this point in mind that it is much when we be inwardly stirred up to do every man his duty for thereby we taste the grace of god which concerneth the salvation of our souls the matter that is in hand here is that men should live friendlily and agreeingly with their wives and when a husband considereth the things that are spoken here he ought to be provoked not only to discharge himself of the bond wherein he is bound to god and his wife but also to think thus with himself this is such a state that although it be corruptible and serve but for this transitory life yet hath god set it afore us as a lively image wherein i see that jesus christ is my head and that i belong to him and that not only i am his but also he is mine so as his life belongs to me and to be short i am as if i were a member of his body seeing then that men in doing their duty towards their wives and wives also in obeying their husbands may behold how they be joined unto christ and that they do the things that belong to the heritage of the kingdom of heaven must it not needs be that we be too unthankful if we consider not how our lord jesus christ laboureth by all means to win us and to make us walk under his yoke and moreover he not only allureth us by the gentle and loving means to the intent we should take the better courage to serve him and to do the things that our calling and state require but also draweth us to him and even in this world and in the transitory and earthly things setteth us forth the everlasting salvation that is prepared for us in heaven and which was bought so dearly for us by the blood of his only son to the intent that in the end we should be partakers of the effect and virtue that proceedeth thereof and now let us fall down before the majesty of our good god with acknowledgment of our faults praying him to vouchsafe so to reform our hearts unto goodness as we may seek nothing but to serve him and to yield ourselves wholly to the obeying of his will and that it may please him therewithal 
so to bear with us in our feebleness as we having received pity and mercy at his hand may in the end be able to stand up before his face and so let us all say almighty god heavenly father etc sermon forty one of the sermons upon the epistle of st paul to the ephesians by john calvin translated by arthur golding this LibriVox recording is in the public domain.